water boiling or Evo Devo is, is worthwhile or what's wrong with it. I'm talking about what's wrong with evolution and what are the problems with it and, and uh, how can we address these. At least, at least let the students hear where the flaws are. I mean, it's like the door is absolutely closed to talking about, it's like reverse inquisition from 300 or how many years ago oh, that this, was. This, this is absurd. Okay, no, it isn't absurd. Uh, you know nothing about the field. Um, I, I'll, I'll recommend a book to you. Uh, look up a book by Mary Jane West Eberhard called Developmental Plasticity and Evolution. And this is a book by a credentialed academic, a very smart woman who's done lots of work in evolutionary biology. And one of the first things she does in this book is she lists all the problems in modern theories of evolution. She she documents them and says, "Here's things that we have to, here's things we have to research further." Okay, I would like to tell the name again because I, I would like to look at that. Yes, it, it's Mary Jane West Eberhard. It's a, it's a hyphenated name. It's it's a it's a very technical book, but it's very very good. And uh, she's talking specifically about these problems. Now the, the difference, though is that she is also proposing other explanations. She is making a positive approach. Mm -hmm. She's saying, here's, here's, here's a flaw in evolution. So, for instance, uh, she, she addresses the concept of adaptive landscapes, which is, is a term we use a lot in certain fields of evolutionary biology. She says, you know, there's a real problem with this metaphor of, of adaptive landscapes, and here's a list of the problems, and here's some solutions that people have proposed to these, these problems. These, these okay. are things that we have to pursue. So it is seriously discussed. However, we don't sit there and say, well, whales didn't evolve, okay? Uh, that's, that's just infantile and ludicrous. This is not the kind of thing that biologists discuss. Well, I think the word infantile falls on the same level of the previous word, and I really don't want to get into an insulting discussion. Let me give you an example where I'm coming from, is take the human brain. 35 trillion cells, many of which, if not all of which, have as many as 10,000 connections, most of which, if not all, have at least 40 chemicals at each one of those chem uh, connections. And they disclose those in different packets and different concentrations to send messages to each other. And they work in groups of millions and billions at a time. It's beyond my comprehension that this could have come about by trial and error. And this isn't discussed in books that discuss the theory of evolution. Yes, it is. Actually, it, is it, is it is not, because they, they uh, can't explain no, that. I, I'm a developmental biologist. I'm, I'm afraid you're stepping right into my field there with that question. But I'm not, uh, I'm not what you are We either. do discuss this in great detail. Uh, in fact, we know quite a bit about how the brain forms and, and, and how it works. And you may be surprised to hear this, but there is a lot of trial and error that goes on. Uh, when you study the development of the brain, what you quickly learn is that neurons grow out at a frantic pace and they make ten times as many connections as are appropriate for the adult. Mm -hmm. And what happens then in, progress in development as it progresses is that inappropriate connections are pruned by trial and error. The ones that make appropriate connections are retained. The ones that do not are lost. Or perhaps it is a they're perfect pruned. analog of, of natural selection. Or, unless they're pruned, or perhaps they're pruned by design. I mean, who don't know, you don't know how they're pruned or why they're pruned. Well, there's yes, no way you could know. <laughs> no, there's no way you could know. <clears throat> you know, there's, there, there, there are many experiments. There's a, time in, there's a time in the life of a fetus when a quarter of a million brain cells migrate practically every minute for a short chunk of time. And they all go to the right place and make all or almost all the right connections. And, and indeed, they do do some pruning. But one would have to speculate that this would take billions and billions of years if one were to have an intermediate step for each one of these. And yet this all happened within oh, a few hundred thousand years maybe uh, or less. You know, the dolphin has been around for five million years and it hasn't changed, but man has been around for 150,000 or less, depending on who you read, if you believe in the old earth uh, material. And, it, and I don't even want to get into the old earth and new earth stuff, but I'm just using your terms. Uh, and, and, and yet man has evolved enormously in, the, in this very short period of time. It's what, what, very, very what, odd. What do, you know that's, what do you know that's different between the, in, between the brain of a human being and a chimpanzee? What do I know is a difference? There's a, yeah. a lot of similarities, yes. 
there are a huge number of similarities. It's it's basically the same thing. Uh, the only changes are in volume. That no, we, we've got a larger brain. No, there's a lot of differences. You know, this old, uh, this old 95 to 98 percent figure, which people throw around, is very very yeah. deceptive. And for the the listeners. What I tell people is you have to think of two pianos that have identical keys. They look exactly alike. One plays a concerto and one plays a rock and roll tune. It's not a matter of the physical parts looking alike. It has to do what comes out the other end. All right, we're going to have a break and come back uh, because we're up against the time. Uh, please uh, stand by, I guess. Yep. Uh, More KKMS Live is coming up. Uh, again, if you miss any portion of this, we will get the audio posted up at the website at kkms.com. Just click on the KKMS Live with Jeff and Lee link. Uh, again, you can also get more information at the website on our Creation Museum tour if you'd like to join us on that, leaving February 23rd through the 26th to the Creation Museum in uh, just outside of Cincinnati, uh, Ohio. It's actually in the on the Kentucky side of the border. But again, uh, stay tuned. More with PZ Myers and Dr. Simmons when we come back. Hi, this is John MacArthur. Listen to Grace to You weekdays at noon here on AM 980 KKMS. Now back to KKMS Live with Jeff and Lee. I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. You listen to AM 980 KKMS, more Spirit of Talk Radio. Thanks for tuning in and listening to us as we discuss the issues, the matters that matter. Right now, we are having a debate regarding uh, the merits of uh, evolution, specifically talking about Darwin's theories. And uh, we're engaged in this discussion is Dr. Jeffrey Simmons, who is a medical doctor, senior fellow of or at the Discovery Institute, and Dr. P.Z. Myers, who is a biologist and associate professor at the University of Minnesota, Morris. And we appreciate uh, the engaging discussion. It's been illuminating, I believe. I, I was hoping that it would be more illuminating than uh, generate more uh, light than heat, and I think to some degree it has done just that. And so what we thought we could do, uh, because of the amount of time we have, uh, just uh, cover a couple of things quickly and then give you each. Well, actually, this well, we, is we have to go, we have to, We're actually really short of time here. We're going to give each of you three minutes just to summarize. And uh, we apologize. We'd love to you know, try to address this issue uh, down the road. So, uh, Jeff, we can start with? Yeah, why don't we start? Well, since uh, uh, PZ started, why don't we have you uh, and then um, and uh, Dr. Got- Simmons. And you've got three minutes to kind of wrap things up on your position and then Right after that, then uh, Dr. Myers can do the same. Begin now. Thank you. Thank you, and uh, it's been a pleasure. Uh, one needs to know that Darwin came from an era of, of time when uh, frogs were born of mud puddles and birds flew to the moon for the winter. And so even though Darwinism has progressed, a lot of people believe Darwin as it was. He was not peer-reviewed. He lacked a bibliography. He violated every aspect of the scientific method. He was bigoted. He had a lot of nasty things to say about women and blacks. And he probably wouldn't even be published today. And yet he's uh, revered as somebody significant. I would ask Dr. Meyer, he would ask me to uh, talk about the monkey brain. I'd ask him to look into the monkey birth. It's actually 180 degrees uh, opposite of ours, <coughs> headwise, and impossible to explain. <coughs> Excuse me. And I would also like to say science and scientists should always seek out the truth, no matter where it may lead. Scientific theory should always be open to intense scrutiny.